Hey guys, welcome to another Level 1 Text video. I'm Krista, a resident designer, developer, and fledgling hardware enthusiast. And today I'm here to talk to you guys about a great graphics editing program called Krita. So before we go into like the meat of the review, I think it's important to maybe give a little bit of background about like me and my work. Now I'm a designer by trade, as I mentioned before, but I also like to illustrate. Typically, I prefer to do stuff with ink and paper, but it doesn't really reproduce very well for print. So like all the stuff in our store, I have to do digitally to make sure it actually looks nice on a tee or a desk mat or whatever it might be. So for my day job, I spend most of my time in the Adobe suite. That's Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign. Um, I love all those programs, I use them a lot, um, but they're not the best in terms of like flexibility. Say in the future if I wanted to move to Linux, I couldn't do that with Adobe, Photoshop, anything. Um, and also you really shouldn't be beholden to like one set of tools. As an artist you need to be able to branch out to lots of different things. Uh, some of the things my professors used to tell me is that you should never stick to learning just one way of doing things because that's always going to change, especially if you work in the technology field. I've looked at a lot of different alternatives for the Adobe suite. Um, I've tried GIMP, not in love with GIMP, never really liked it. I know some of you guys on the forums are in love with it. It's not for me. Uh, so I decided, you know, I'm going to find something else. And I tried Krita and I was like a little skeptical at first, but I'm really pleasantly surprised by what I found. The biggest thing that I found was a really big plus for Krita is that it stays out of the way. It's very, very intuitive compared to programs like GIMP, where the UX can feel like it kind of gets in the way sometimes. I could get started working in this immediately. Uh, the tools are all laid out very simply. If you mouse over them, you get a nice little tooltip explaining what they are, but the icons are such that you really don't even need the tooltips. Your colors and layer palettes are located at the right side here, and very simple to use. Again, all just icon-based, very easy. And even if you don't really love the way this is laid out, you can actually change your workspace any way you like, just like you would say with an Adobe product. And then you can save it as your own configurable workspace for later. The other thing I love about it is how easy it is to set up a tablet. This is like my biggest pet peeve with any sort of graphics editing software is it takes a long time to get a tablet configured the way I want. And you know, I've found angry forum posts in either direction where it's like people are blaming Adobe, people are blaming Wacom, people are blaming uh, Windows. I don't really care. I just want it to work. What's great about Krita is it's literally just one little thing in the menu. Just go in, change your slider, and it's done. Now I've tested Krita on a few different machines. I've tested it on a Windows 10 machine, which is my home machine, and I've tested it on Windows 8. I had some issues configuring it in Windows 8, but I think that's more a Wacom issue and not necessarily anything to do with Krita because I had the same issue in Photoshop. But Windows 10, Mac, and Linux all run really great. So it's really cross-platform compatible. The other thing I really like about it too is if I work at a really large scale, like I think I've gone up to like 25 by 25 inches, which not huge but pretty good size, is it doesn't hitch. I can make the brushes whatever size I want, uh, it can zoom in and out, and it doesn't feel like it's stuttering, which is something I sometimes run into with Photoshop. Of course, that doesn't necessarily mean that there aren't any issues with Krita. I did find a few things I didn't love. One of the things I didn't like about Krita is when you use your physical mouse wheel, it doesn't move your canvas up and down, it zooms in on the canvas. I thought that was really strange. Now maybe that's something that's configurable for your workspace, but I was not able to immediately find that. And you know, you can, maybe you can change that like in a text file somewhere, but uh, one of the things I, I've liked about Krita so far is that I've not had to go digging in the same way that I have with GIMP. So I don't know, that your mileage may vary there. Another item in the could be better category is the scroll bars. This is a, a really minor thing and I feel silly for even mentioning it, but if I was zoomed in on a section working on a detailed area and then I wanted to say scroll up just a little bit, because I can't use my scroll wheel, I have to you know, actually mouse over it and then move. Because the scroll bar is so low contrast, I kept clicking on the negative space and then like it would jump up halfway up the page. So that's not great either and it's not a big deal, but it's enough to kind of break your immersion a little bit. Another small UI change that I would maybe make if I was a developer of Krita is for the layer opacity. Um, it doesn't have a very strong affordance and the first like three times I used Krita, I didn't even realize where it was. I had to go to their forums and like get some help with it. And it's actually just a tiny little bar, but there's no indication that you can actually do anything with it. If I were the designer here, I would probably make it 
So when you moused over it, you'd get a cursor like a hand to indicate you could drag it, or I would make the arrow buttons a little bit larger. And finally, I've left the biggest issue I have with Krita for last, and the biggest thing I would say is that it's not a design program. Um, it's great if you're an illustrator and you're just wanting to draw, but because it has, you know, pretty poor text tools and pretty poor vector tools, it's not something you could use to say, like, whip out a poster or a website. Uh, now, they did just add the text tools, like, last year. Um, they had a big Kickstarter for it. And they do, you know, they, they work okay, but you don't have any options for kerning or leading or even like a faux bold or italic. The developers, though, because they've done such a good job everywhere else, I really think that the text tools will improve with time. So if you're watching this review like a year or two from now, you know, you might check it out and see if the text tools have improved because I'm sure that they're going to keep doing that. What's the final verdict for Krita? Now, I would say this is a really great program for anyone who's an illustrator and anyone who's maybe looking to get started. Uh, anything in the Adobe suite is going to cost you a lot more money. This is an open source free alternative and honestly if you're just doing illustrations I would recommend this over Photoshop. It's a lot easier to configure and it stays out of the way. It has maybe less tools. It's like a, a scalpel versus like you know a machete in terms of precision in the tool. If you are a designer probably not the best tool for you. You might still need to get that Adobe subscription. But for what this is, like, you know, it's free, open source. You can't really complain. It's a great program. If you guys want to know more about Krita, you can go to their website at krita.org. They have a lot of great documentation, tutorials, uh, community artwork featured there. All of those things are really great when you're getting started. Uh, some other programs I'm maybe looking at for this series, I'm looking at maybe looking at Inkscape. You guys had maybe mentioned that somewhere in the comments. Don't know if I'll do GIMP, but we'll see. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions for us about what open source projects you'd like to see reviewed, leave a comment below. I'm Krista. I'll see you guys on the Level 1 Text forums. Bye!